Hi to everyone watching this. My name is Gamu, and today I want to walk you through how we can build a self-adjusting expert advisor that uses the RSI. We want our expert advisor right, to learn on its own when should it buy and when should it sell. We don't want to give it fixed instructions as to say whenever the RSI is at the 30 level, right, buy, and when it's at the 70 level, sell. No, we want it to learn by itself from the data it has when it should be buying and when it should be selling. So yeah, this is the volatility doctor approach. So let's get into this, man. Okay, so I'll quickly walk you through most of the code that we have, right? So as per usual, we start off by importing standard libraries, right? Python, pandas, I'm saying Python, pandas, numpy, seaborn, mt5, the normal stuff, the usual stuff. And then here we're fetching 300,000 rows of M1 data on the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen pair. So from there, we label our data, we label our targets, right? To denote whether the future price increased or decreased, right? Positive one for increases, negative one for decreases. And this is what the data looks like so far after we've transformed it. From here now, what we want to do essentially is that we're going to subdivide our RSI into 10 grids, right? Into 10 levels. So from zero to 10, 10 to 20, and so on and so on, up until we get to the 90 to 100 level. And what we want to observe is after price passes through each of these levels, right? Like as you can see, for example, here at the very beginning, the RSI was at 12, right? So we're going to then look 20 steps into the future and then see what happened to, to price then? Did it increase or decrease? And then we're going to record this throughout the entire data set, right? And you can tell by this long nested loop that we have, which could have been simplified. However, that's what we were doing. We were adding up those future target values. So in the end, we ended up with a vector like this one that you see right here. So as you can see here, at the, the title for the columns is the range for the RSI values, right? 0 to 10, 11 to 20, and so on. And if the column ended up with a positive value, then that means that price had a tendency of increasing after passing through that RSI zone. And if the column had a negative value, that means price has had a tendency of decreasing after passing through that zone. As you can see, for this last zone here, the 91 to 100 level, we got NAN, not a number, right? So that means um, in the training set, right, because we perform this partition on the training set. I'm sorry if I moved too fast and I forgot to say that. But yeah, we split the data into train and test sets. And then on the train set, we performed this arithmetic, right, these calculations. And there were no observations in the training set that were within this range of 9 to 1 to 100. So what, what I ended up doing was that since the neighboring ranges have negative values, I assigned it an arbitrary negative value. So that's how we fix that. That can happen, right? Because the idea behind the Markov model is that we're, we're trying to, we're basically making the assumption that what, what happened most frequently in the past will continue to happen in future. And that's, that's a very, that's a simplification of a Markov model right there. Yeah, it is, right? So it's a greedy algorithm. So now we've plotted the distribution of these counts, right? To, to try to see if there's any discernible relationship. As you can see, price, price tends to spend most of its time within this 31 to 70 zone right here, right? And it appears that all these, whatever the RSI is in these zones, right? From, from 60 all the way to 10, it tends to be bullish. And when it's in these zones from 61, going up until 100, it tends to be bearish, right? That's at least what, what we can reasonably say from the training data we've observed. Now, when we plot this as a scatter plot, right? You can already see at the, at the extreme ends, right? We have the 41 to 50 level right here. This this purple diamond. And this, this pink triangle at the bottom represents the 61 to 70 level. So these appear to have so much bullish and bearish potential, right? But 
we're not really interested in the training set. What we want to know is how well does this translate onto the test set, right? How well do, does this hold true? So from there, we prepared our test set, right? We reset it, and then we created a column for predictions, right? We're going to make predictions on the test set using our Markov model that we learned from the training set. So as you can see here, we're simply going through the test set, and whenever we find values less than 10, we predict price will increase. We make predictions using this vector that we calculated from our training set. Now, what do you know? This model was 52% accurate on the test data, right? Now, keep in mind, our data sets, our original data was 300,000 rows. So each partition was 150 something thousand rows. So these results are, are pretty significant, right? To be getting 52% accuracy on such a large number, like, like 100,000 rows, yeah. So here I wanted to plot the, the error, right, per group, because remember we were considering our RSI inputs per group. So I wanted to know which group gave us the most reliable predictions. And as you can see, this, this red line denotes the 50% level, right? So this group is not particularly reliable because it, it fell beneath the 50% level, right? And then as you can see, these initial groups, right, they had quite high validation levels of like 70%, right, which is pretty good. However, the last group, right, 90 to 100, it had validation accuracy of 100%. But recall that it's quite rare to see price in that, in that level because in our training set, we, we, didn't, we, we had no observations in that zone. So yeah, that's not reliable as, as a sell signal. That, that, that zone is not reliable, it's not frequently hit. So I think the, an optimal zone could be the 71 to 80 range, right? Because uh, if I can just show it to you here, yeah, the 71 to 80 range is, is somewhere here. It's one of these zones here, and it's, it's a bearish signal. And then our best bullish signal is somewhere there in, in between the zero to two interval. <laughs> I just remember that, that you can't see the mouse. In the, in, in the video. Okay, so these are our accuracy levels like on on the different groups, right? So now, now what I wanted to know now was that, okay, can we outperform our Markov model, right? If we took a deep neural network and then trained it on the predictions made by the Markov model and the actual observations from the training set, right? Can our deep neural network outperform this Markov model? And the answer is not with this approach, it will not, right? So what I did was I took the training set, I partitioned the training set into two halves yet again, right? So the training train and the validation train, right? And then we, we recalculated our transition matrix, right? Using the new training set, right? The first half of the training set. And after performing that, this is the distribution we observed, right? And I plotted this distribution and it kind of looks like a sigmoid function, right? It kind of it kind of looks like a sigmoid graph. And that's the 50% level. So this one is now it's a probabilistic model, right? So it's showing us the, the probability of price rising in future. Right. So if the probability is above 0 0.5, that zone is considered bullish. Otherwise, if it's less, it's considered bearish. So it appears that zones above 61 are bullish and zones beneath 61, zones above 61 are bearish and zones beneath 61 are bullish. Right. From the first half of the training set. However, we then trained our model, right? We recorded the predictions and we trained our model, and lo and behold, on the test set, what do you know? It actually turns out that they performed at par with each other, right? So we didn't manage to outperform the, the, the Markov model by making a hybrid deep Markov model. No, we didn't. We performed at par. However, we outperformed 
a model that was trying to directly predict price given market quotes and we outperformed a model that used all this data so simply taking a markov model right and like is is actually more reliable than trying to use a deep neural network predicting price right and mind you this this was all done right uh using a simple rsi indicator we our markov states were being determined by the rsi so yeah that was quite interesting so it appeared that like our most stable results came as we said from buying from selling when the rsi is in the 71 to 80 range and buying when the rsi is in the 11 to 20 range so given those insights uh we i then went on to to implement an expert advisor right that tries to take advantage of of, of our new understanding right so i want to give give you a sort of a visual aid a visual con conception of what we're trying to do today so as you can see i've marked out like 10 zones on the rsi right these 10 levels and what what we want to know is that as the rsi passes through each of these zones right what does it tend to do in future so when the rsi passes through this zone right here right which is the uh which zone is that it's the 40 to 50 zone right in the future price tended to what to appreciate or did price tend to depreciate that's what we're trying to conceptualize that's what we're trying to get our model to learn i hope this 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 visual explanation okay let's back test our strategy and see how it performs like on a real use case so these are the parameters i'm testing it with i'm setting the rsi to 20 the moving average 200 lot size on 10 and i want it to close using the moving average so let's see how it goes started the tests i'm just waiting for the guy yo guys it's bad as you can see my laptop is like a joke but anyway guys <laughs> as i wait for my laptop to catch up with us uh, I think I might be downloading data, like, shit. Oh no, there it goes, there it goes. Uh, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> we back tested this over what? Uh, M1 data from February all the way to March, right? And as you can see, hey, we were making a killing. He didn't close it on time. Look at that, look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Caught a big, a nice big trade there. But let's see. Hmm. These are our profit levels. A total net profit of $875, right? Yeah. Short trades won 22%, right? The average profit was nine hundred dollars. The average loss was eighty-seven dollars. Right? These these are pretty good stats. And yeah, guys. So yeah, that's just one possible way of building an expert advisor that learns how to use your indicators optimally in the market that it's in. I'm curious to know what are your thoughts? How would you approach this problem? Like, what would you do differently? Hmm? Share, dog. Let me know. Let's go.